When Easter story is, we slow down, we take a break, go to church, or be with families and friends. I wouldn't comment much on Easter eggs and bunnies, since where I come from, those stories were never shared by Grandma, Anganga, Abia, Mapui, on those starry nights under Bagajere tree. But the main Easter story among many sounds like the one below, the role of a father in every person, born of a father and a mother. On this broadcast, we'll share a poem about fatherlessness. Around the poem will reflect on fatherlessness and its impact on people, whether from rich or poor background. For the aspect of lacking holistic fatherhood input, class or money is not the main shield. Seriously, in the story of Jesus dying on the cross, how does it relate to fatherlessness? I am glad you asked. The answer to this is, even when the all-knowing one, omnipotent one, the sufficient one, when life was fading, his breath fading away, he cried out to his father. Isn't that what we do when life is tough? When children in danger, they call out to a father or a mother, don't they? But what happens to those who have never known a father, or fathers who have passed on? Or a father who is there, but as from the east, from the west, that's how he is emotionally with his children, very distant. Hold on, why are you putting pressure on fathers? They are doing a grand job under the pressure we are already in. Please wait, wait, slow down, don't hit the stop button. If on this matchless poetic show we are talking about it, that means we have invested our interest in it. And every word is our way of cheering them on. And it is also an add-on to the roles fathers play in lives of children, whether biological or adopted. Our words, in a way, are like auxiliary gears to the noble duties carried out by fathers. So on today, my just poetic makeover show, episode 5, in the series of Who Will Be There, would like to highlight the issues of fatherlessness. Share some poetic prudence on how to rectify it and solidify the fatherhood backbone. We are going to do that through a discussion of a poem written by Gertrude Gift Kazua, a blogger of Madras Poetic Makeover on madrasprudence.com website. Here is the poem. Innumerable questions but none to answer under the thunder of the brutality of the cross. A call out to his father, who seemed very cross to draw close as a snatch of his only son from the jaws of death. He cried out to his father to be a bulldozer to the Roman soldiers on a mission nor any other but the crucifixion of the lion of the tribe of Judah. But like a band of unprepared invaders in the camp of valiant warriors, they became like a faller, no feathers after a ceaseless attempt for freedom from snares. He's not a mere survivor, but the risen one, a rescuer, redeemer, savior, and friend who did the will of a father. He gave his life to save another. But men are on the bare floors or carpeted fair grounds, milk watered or cracked throats, since for every drop of water they need a plea for the divine to create oasis. Those in the prestige lecture theatres, or those their science labs are but a nightmare for even a mere big Israeli there. Those in executive board chambers or wanderers on the street, not because they were not once among the university elite, but life parades them as unfit for the executive seats. For they don't know executive sign posts, for it's no longer interviews that can hand them the posts. But all these come from all the corners of the globe, their backs in sackcloth or fair robes. But they all face one unseen robber, invisible fiends with legs like starfish, furious and valiant like lamb, arms of whirlwind, all around their heart spears, daily rattling, deflating their emotional and psychic cupboards, because that is lob, where just trickles to build the inner citadel with every following fountain of healthy emotion on solid rock, incalculable questions and heard tears and seen groans they all yearn 
Father, they ask, why have you forsaken me? No, let, not latest fashions, not mansions of elegance, but something deeper to lunch on. For vampires of hope, they come and suck. It's only a heart built on a canyon of fatherly emotional love which can carry on. It's a heart given the chance to fail and it fell, but then a great light is on of you can sell again. We are always a flood on from the word God, from the nursery. When Amari, when life is like pain after a major surgery, one goes not to an infirmary with no injury, but an ceaseless inquiry when the father wasn't taken, but life seems to have overtaken, an emotional mass of confidence and security shrank, leaving one lack forever in lack, whether in a palace or slums, not because life the father plagued, but life created an emotional bankruptcy and a psychological insufficiency, and lives many with a heart of often a heart which knows not the true love of father unless the savior of the world into his hand their hearts they surrender thank you what am i saying in the poem through this broadcast majest poetic show we share stories of real people with real life issues our uniqueness is we don't cover issues here Instead, we peel layers which cover real issues. We allow people to feel and possibly heal. We don't just peel and leave the soul exposed. Rather, we apply a new de- dressing. If we need be, we leave it exposed. The essence of it is to heal. Yes, whatever we share in this matchless poetic makeover, even in the bad, we green hope. A fun to live when we're around it seems like oxygen is full of carbon monoxide. Through the poem above, we peel the issue of fatherlessness. Yes, Jesus asked his father, why did he seem to forsake him? Life is a womb of questions, isn't it? Both in the good or the bad. At least Jesus, despite the pain, he recognized him and he knew where to call. He had to call his father. But how about those who in the physical sense, they are not with with the father when divorce or those outside wedlock when the father does not take the full responsibility? How about those whose fathers are in prison and they will never live together under the same roof? How about those in mission fields and the children get to see them once a year? If a child grows, growth was a button, we could pause when the father is away and reset it when the father is back so that the children should not miss out on his output. Sometimes we can sleep on an, an empty stomach when the sack of Irish potato is empty or when there is no nanny bread in the cupboard. But not so when a parent or a guardian deliberately withdraws food for no apparent reason. How broad is that? When cows daily they are able to supply food to their young ones. But man, out of selfishness and other reason, we thought it was pathetic, isn't it? Am I correct to say that sometimes it's okay to grow without a father much as it hurts? But it is confidence rattling, emotional wrecking insecurity infusing, rejection ballooning, and worthlessness fatalizing. When the father is there, but just like, like the east is from the west, he is emotionally Jupiter miles away. Why all these depressing factors on your program which you say you, you're supposed to share about hope? My answer to that is, our years of nesting taught us it is better out than in. It is better exposed than covered. In short, the wound that is covered, but its stage is not assessed. Healing promotion is poorly implemented. Likewise, fatherlessness is a global pandemic. It affects all classes, the young and the old. Sadly to say some others can have an orphan heart, not because they lost a father through death or divorce, but the father was not there. He was emotionally distant. He provided gadgets, 
but not emotional gates to secure. He provided school fees, but no day did he take his children to show them fishing lines. For children don't merely yearn flashy designs, but how to hold a fishing line, because one day it will remind them they can still align when life pushed them out of line. Sometimes the father, he applauded the children when they brought back medals. But when their certificates were littered with rubbers of results, they were quickly scolded and discarded like rot- rotten trap here. Never embraced them or assured them that life is not about exams. The grams of life is not measured in degrees, neither is measured by pounds of trophies they lifted, but rather, despite how many pounds of blows one receive, tomorrow that one he can still face. And sometimes even just mere hugs can assure one who has failed, one who has done well, one who is covered in shame, he can be given an assurance that a mango tree is not measured. A mango tree fruit, fruitness, fruitfulness is not measured in one season. Are we surprised then why sometimes we have many men addicted to work and they get one excellent approval report after another, but they are like a walking on a slippery eyes when it comes to being a husband or a father? Why is that the case? My answer to that is, the only time, maybe, maybe, the only time their father or mother gave or pastor, guardian, prayed trumpet, it was only when they brought something good home. But every time when they lived in nothing but wind, hell broke loose. They went into emotional cycles of being owned and disowned. Are you still wondering why some fathers men, leaders, they hold everything with a glue of emotion, control and manipulation because the father was not there or they were there just to meet the physical needs but did not know how to handle over the emotional baton. How could they, they do it? How could they inject it in their children if even them, the only time that they were told man, they could see man cry, it was on a TV or on Advert, because all along they were told that men don't cry. Or can I just say it here? Hundred percent, it's okay. Hundred percent for man to cry. Tears are rivers which should wash away the debris of pain, loss of business, wife, mom, ministry. I would rather create a river than a swamp of frustrations and pain to stay in my inner citadel. I'll leave this here. Some children, their home was a battle of abuse and control. In their bag, they collected the same sour grapes. As I wander up, these are my reflections. COVID-19 is a global pandemic. But before it could destroy man and his all his plans, before it could become ischemic, a mask was found as a shield. Washing hands became a mask. Social distance is one of the rules that we all follow. Lockdown, despite its effects, we have all allowed. The vaccine is now being administered. But with fatherlessness, despite being a pandemic, there is still a long way for for us to get on top of it. Why am I pondering? Why am I hammering about fatherlessness? These are some facts about fatherlessness. Children who do not experience the love of a father, they are more likely to smoke, drink, commit a crime, become pregnant when they are teen, rebel, don't do well in class, and they end up in many jobs and lead a poor life. Their chances of being stuck in the same social class are so high. So, is there anything that we can do? Yes, surely. Because I have seen coronavirus, devastating as it might be, we have a vaccine now. I am convinced that if all of us see the role of the father being crucial, we can join hands to overcome fatherlessness. 
So from this show, what are the prudence that I, ha- I-, I am hearing? I have lived the two schools plus some years. One thing I know is, mother's love is worth like a million, but the love of a father is a weapon. His love is an emotional muscle for every child, and this brings strong and secure ladies, both in suits or shorts. I leave you with the final reflection. In our small or big way, how can we reverse the spiral of fatherlessness and the life of living like an orphan, and loved, and accepted, and worth, and appreciated? To deny that I don't have a wound when one has a wound is not faith. Faith is to undress the wound, assess it, clean it, dress it, and then pray. Likewise, we can't deny the effects of fatherlessness and expect them to go away. But we, if we take the attitude, we are in all this together, surely we can rise above this fatherlessness pandemic. Yes, true, it is a pandemic, but it's not a sc- ischemic. Something can still be done. Thank you so much for listening to me. Up until next time, join us again as we share hope nuggets, nuggets of life. And no matter what you do or where you go, don't forget to choose hope above fear because it's hope that feeds into love and the true love which casts away fear. And that casting out of fear can also help a man out there to believe, to cast out the fear that he can be a good father. I want to encourage men out there, yes, you can be a good father to your own children, your biological children, but also to your adopt, adopted children, but also the other children that you find in the community, you can be a role model. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.